So what's the difference between a censored and a senseless brushless DC motor? So a censored brushless DC motor, it uses hall sensors um, to identify the rotor position. Um, this information is then it's sent to the controller. So you would have three hall sensor wires and then they have to be powered. So you also have power connection. So you've got five wires in total. Um, so a censored motor typically will have eight wires. You've got the three motor phase wires three hall sensor wires and then you've got the power supply for the hall sensors. Um, typically these are placed at 120 degree intervals um, however you do you do sometimes get 60 degree um, but the vast majority of them are 120 degree. So the sensors are then used to give the rotor to provide the uh, rotor position to the controller so it knows exactly where it is and it can then synchronize the drive um, accordingly. A senseless motor on the other hand as you uh, might expect doesn't have sensors um, so this means that the controller has to drive the motor without knowing the position at the rotor at startup. So it'll typically do what we call a forced commutation, which is it will spin the motor up in order to then pick its position um, and it can then drive it from there. Um, there will be another video with a bit more detail about that. So I'm not going to cover that in this one, but um, just to give you an overview. So the pros and cons of using a censored brushless DC motor. So the pros are they typically enable a smoother startup because you know exactly where the rotor position is so you can synchronize the drive accordingly and part of that as well is that they will then typically operate a little bit better at lower speeds a lot of this is you know it does depend on the motor that you've got the load that you've got there's there's you know you can have a sensorless motor and it'll be exactly the same but it's just typically speaking you'll get slightly better performance at lower speed with a sensored motor cons then so if you're looking at the, the negative side certain applications um, largely to do with the application that it's going into sensors can be prone to failure so for example if it was a pump or if it was something that was going into a slightly difficult environment where there was potential for you know ingress into the motor of some description what you can get is you can get sensor failure and if you get sensor failure the motor is, is it's not gonna the controller won't be able to turn it because it just won't it, you know it relies on the positioning from the from the whole sensors to, in order to be able to function um, a second con um, which does come up sometimes is that sensor motors are not able to be driven at the highest possible speeds because the response time of the sensors can be slightly limiting uh, it's a bit more you don't tend to see that one too much but it's just something to be aware of um, so looking at pros and cons of senseless motors then pros are that um, they're typically more reliable fundamentally this is just because sensors can fail so if you don't need a sensor then it's just another part of the um, part of it that, that, that can't fail that will then make it inherently more reliable um, as I said before sensorless motors can also be driven faster than sensored motors typically speaking um, equally one thing to bear in mind is depending on the motor that you've got the manufacturing tolerances can have an impact so for example um, as I said at the start you know they're, they're typically done at 120 degree um, intervals but if they are slightly out let's say 122 and then the next one sort of 118 what you'll find is that you'll get you'll get more noise for one thing but it's 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 inefficient because what it's what it's doing is the controller is is using the sensors to take its position but because of the tolerances being out the position that it's telling you is slightly out as well that then means that the drive isn't synchronizing quite as well as it could do and that then means that you get an inefficiency in the system you'll typically notice that through noise but obviously it's not it's not ideal in any sense really again another video that we're going to be doing um, which depending on when you're watching this video may already be up there so worth having a look is it is possible to get the best of both worlds so what you can do is we have controllers where you start up in in censored mode and then as the speed picks up it transitions across to sensorless so that helps you with you get a smoother start up because you've got the benefit of the sensors but then as you're picking up speed, you can get rid of any potential inefficiency by transitioning to senseless. Cons then um, with senseless. So you, you, you're typically looking at startup, um, especially with high inertia loads, can be a bit tricky. Um, it's just, it's again, because you don't exactly know where the rotor position is, it can take a bit of tuning in. Pretty much it can always be tuned in. Um, you know, and we, we've, we've done lots of applications where we've had senseless motors running with with a high high inertia 
um, at the startup and it, it can always be tuned tuned in to, to, to deal with that but it can just take a bit of extra time um, another thing that is coming up more and more is is, is low inductance motors um, these can be a bit harder to drive with senseless again it's it's not it's not normally a problem it can be dealt with but it's just again at that particular it's the startup where a sensor can just help you um pick up exactly where the rotor position is you might not be getting quite as good signals back from the um, motor but um you know it's something to bear in mind and then linked to this is is what you might experience at startup is a slightly jerky startup um because the because with sensorless the controller doesn't exactly know where the rotor position is it has to spin it up find it um, and this can sometimes lead to a bit of jerkiness which obviously you don't want so talking about which one's right for your application well it is a difficult question to answer because you do need to know the the specific details of the application broadly speaking the only thing i can really say at this point is if you are looking at low running speeds then we would tend to recommend censored uh, if you are looking at very high speeds then we would nearly always recommend sensorless the other thing to bear in mind as well is rapid changes in speed so for example if you're doing something like certain types of tools where you know it'll have a, a quite high no load speed but then it'll be getting it it'll be seeing a sudden load you know as the tool is used censored can sometimes be better because it can it can pick up that change very very quickly again not meaning to just keep contradicting but you can with sensorless you can you can change you can optimize things like the pid settings to mean that you can negate that um, but it's just something to think about as with all this stuff um, if you have any questions or there's anything that you, you're not sure on you know please just visit us zcodrive.com um, and we can you know send us a message or give us a ring and we'd be happy to help